you made me do this. Seriously, since the very beginning of the Engine Masters show, the audience has demanded a showdown of like low octane pump gas versus better pump gas versus race gas. What does it all mean to you? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run 87 versus 91 octane California pump gas straight out of the station down the street. And then we're gonna run Sunoco leaded race gas in 110 octane and 116. And at the very end, yes, We'll be running E85 to find out if it makes even more power than gasoline. Here's the engine that we're gonna be doing it with. This is a Blueprint Engines crate motor. It's an LS3, it's a 6.2 liter. It's got Blueprint's 259 heads on it. It's 10.7 to one compression. It has a 225 239 camshaft in it, obviously a hydraulic roller. It's advertised at 530 horsepower and 495 pound-feet of torque. We're still testing with the 87 octane pump gas and we've done our timing sweeps. We found that 29 degrees of total ignition timing is kind of the optimum in this circumstance. The next thing that we're going to do is test air fuel ratio. We're gonna swing it a little bit leaner, half a point leaner, half a point richer and see if we see any trend there. All right, first pass is gonna be half a point richer. Sure enough, it's just a little bit, tiny, tiny bit down when it's half a ratio rich. So now we're gonna go half a ratio leaner than it was on our baseline. So it looks like our best pull is gonna be 29 degrees of ignition timing and 12.8 to 12.9 AFR. What a surprise. I know, <laughs> kind of right there. So our power numbers for this thing, actually dead on what Blueprint Engines advertises are pretty close. 539.4 horsepower at 6,400 RPM, 498.9 pound-feet of torque at 5,200. The other thing that I'm gonna do in this episode is run average power in case there are changes at other points in the curve with the different gasolines. And we did that from 3,500 to 6,500 RPM. So add up all of the power numbers, divide by the number of data points, and here's what you get. 475.5 pound-feet on average and 452.7 horsepower on average. So the takeaway for me is under dyno conditions, the 87 octane met the engine's requirements because it all came out in the normal range of timing and air fuel. I still think if it was me, I wouldn't do it in a car. No, neither Hotter would I. temperature in the coolant, more load, more underhood temperature, worse manifold air temperature. I'm not gonna do it. No. All that stuff you just said is yeah. all bad. Um, you know, in the dyno cell, we've got good airflow. We can keep the engine cooler just, it, it, it all makes it easier and, and kind of helps suppress detonation. Under the hood, whole different story. Yep, right. Okay, so we're in agreement. Ready to move on to 91 octane pump gas. Here's our final data with 91 octane pump gas. We found that it wanted the same ignition timing as the 87 octane, 29 degrees. What's really interesting is that it ended up wanting to run a little bit leaner. We saw about 13 and a half to one made microscopically more power than 12.8 to one. I'm talking like two or three numbers here or there, but it was better, and so we ran the thing a little bit lean. Here's our peak power numbers. Horsepower, 539.6 at 6,400 RPM, 
Torque 501.1 at 5,300 RPM. Now that 501 seems like we crested the 500 number on Torque. Well, we were running 498.9 before, so it's very, very little, as evidenced by the average power numbers, which are this. Keeping in mind, this is 3,500 to 6,500 RPM. We saw 476.3 pound-feet of torque and 453.6 horsepower, which is like insignificantly higher. I see average people go, oh, should I get the 87 or should I get more power out of the 91? In fact, some of the gas is advertised as like, you know, super power 91 or whatever. And the fact is at the pump, if your engine's not in detonation at 87 octane, it's not gonna make more power at 91 octane. Do you think that's a fair categoric statement? I think that's a pretty fair statement across the board. If it doesn't need the octane, it doesn't need the octane. Yep. And so now we're gonna go to the Sunoco 110 octane leaded race fuel. This is gonna be the 91 octane unleaded coming out and the 110 octane leaded race gas going in. We've gone through our whole tune-up plan on the 110, and big surprise, it still likes 29 degrees <laughs> of timing. No difference yeah. at all. And the AFR, it went back to what we saw with the 87 octane, which was that it really likes 12.7 to 12.8 at peak power. Here's the power peaks. 539.9 horsepower at 6,400 RPM, and the torque, 499.1 at 5,300. On our averages, 475.1 pound-feet of torque and 452.5 horsepower. So once again, nada. All right, that's all of the Sunoco 110 out. And now Troy is gonna pour the 116 in. Okay, Steve, I apologize for wasting your time. <laughs> There's been a whole lot of dyno pulls to figure out. It doesn't care. Guess what? 116 octane likes 29 degrees of timing, just like every other fuel. And uh, pretty much 12.8 to 1 AFR also. Here's the power peaks with the 116. They'll sound surprisingly familiar to you. 541.3 <laughs> horsepower at 6,400 RPM, 497.4 pound-feet of torque at 5,300 RPM. On average, 474.7 pound-feet and 452.1 horsepower, which is less than one horsepower on average different than the 87 octane. I guess uh, gasoline's Gasoline. Gasoline. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's all the same. I think we would all agree that the results would be wildly different if this was boosted or had 14 to 1 compression or anything like that. For an engine like this, the bottom line conclusion is if you don't have a knocking problem with the fuel that you're running now, more octane is not going to make more power. 100% agree. So now we have to find out if E85 makes more power as we drain the gasoline out of our LS3 and load it up with some ethanol mix. So on that one, you actually swung the timing all the way to 33, right? Yeah. Because... Well, I've heard the, e, the, the E85 guy say, oh no, you gotta add six degrees, you gotta add eight degrees. I mean, I've heard like some crazy timing numbers. So I wanted to go past where we lost a little power to show that if we went further, we lost more. So we went over the edge. Oddly enough, it still wanted the same timing that it had. Yep, that's what we found. 29 <laughs> degrees of timing 
again, the same as the gasoline, made the best power on E85. Now the air fuel ratio, of course, we also tuned it all over the place and we found that on a gasoline scale at like 12.6 to one, on a uh, Lambda scale actually for E85, that would be an 8.4 to one air fuel ratio. Here's the peak power numbers. Finally, we're seeing some improvements. 551.5 horsepower at 6,400 RPM. The torque 506.5 at 5,200 RPM. We also took our averages, which is another big jump up. The torque was 484 and the horsepower 460.9. So those are good gains. I like E85. Yeah. yeah, can we look at the overlay of this? Which gasoline do you want to run it against? The I mean, 91 it doesn't was probably just fractionally the best of okay. the gasolines. Show the 91, so that would be like pump gas to pump gas, what a normal guy could do, meaning 91 right. to E85. So this overlay is gonna tell you how much better the E85 is. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's unusual based on what we've seen before. We did an episode yeah. with a 12 and a half to one big block with a carburetor and we did E85 versus race gas and it made meat in the middle, had improvements right in the middle of the curve, but nothing at the top. This surprises me too. I thought maybe with a, a little more time down low to cool the combustion chamber, we might see bigger changes there, but man, it's just railroad tracks all the way up. It yeah. just makes more power. It's got oxygen in it, more oxygen in it. Hmm. Not what I expected, <laughs> but still pretty good. I mean, it's obvious why people run E85 and this isn't even boosted. We know in no. boosted applications, it makes a way bigger difference. It made more power, but really its major advantage is its octane and detonation tolerance because you can run a lot more compression ratio NA than we have here. Or like you said, a boosted application, you can run more boost with uh, that fuel. Because it cools the intake charge. I guess we need to move on to methanol. Now, when we do that, what is the difference between the stoic of E85 and stoichiometric for methanol? 6.6 six and nine, 9 to 1 for the E85. Which means, speaking in broad terms, methanol wants about twice as much volume of fuel yeah, as gasoline. It's 100% more instead of 30% more. As right, far as right. Volume. And it wants another 30% on top of E85. More than that. More than that? <laughs> yeah. Is well, it? I mean, if you're starting with, you know, 100 pounds and you turn it to 130 pounds, if it's 30% more, 100% more isn't 30, another 30%, is it? 30% of 130? I always screw up the math when we guess. <laughs> Why don't we just say so. twice as much? <laughs> <laughs> well, but how much more do you need? How much more fuel do you need to go from gasoline to E85? 30%. 30%. Okay, and from going from gasoline to... Methanol, you need 100% more. more. You double it. Yeah, which is why you can't take an E85 carburetor and turn it into a methanol carburetor. Yeah. Have you looked at methanol carburetor jets? Yeah, they're like, you know. It's a whole nother jet configuration, a whole nother thread count, a whole nother metering block. The orifices throughout the carburetor are massive. So mm -hmm. it's, it's built to move a lot more fuel. Well, let's find out if it's worth it. So we're gonna go change the carburetor to a QFT methanol carb and then pour methanol in the tank and fire it up and see if that methanol is worth way more power. Is it worth the aggravation? That's what we're here to find out. this packaging. It's all I... nice and blue. I like methanol power. Oh yeah, methanol's the best, really, if it's right for your application, though. <laughs> You've always told me that it makes more torque than horsepower, but let's have a look. Here's our power numbers on the methanol. Way more torque. We got 670 pound-feet. If you compare that to regular gasoline at 647, that's a big change. <laughs> and our horsepower was 769.6, up at 6,500 RPM, which is almost the same. We saw 770.4 yeah, on number. the gasoline. So while that looks fantastic, it's 
basically the same as the oxygenated gasoline. Yeah. Uh, let's go into pros and cons of methanol. I think it has some big cons again that is what stops me from considering it useful. The problem with methanol is you have to service the fuel system anytime you're gonna park the car. That's because of uh, it's corrosive? It's corrosive, it's hygroscopic, so it yeah. pulls water in and then corrodes everything. Here's a question, because I know that like on a top alcohol funny car, it just destroys the oil on every pass. Yeah. Does that happen if you're using it on a boat? If you're making that kind of power, it yeah. does. I mean, but I think a lot of that has to do with when you're running 30 pounds of boost, mm -hmm. you're pushing something past the rings no matter what. Every single time. Yeah. So, so maybe with less boost or normally aspirators, you're not gonna have those problems to that extreme. The other thing is that it's harder to ignite. Have you run across a situation where you need more ignition system than you would for gasoline if you're running in methanol? Not so much more ignition system because it seems with the MSD stuff, we're kind of okay, okay with most of all that stuff anyway. What I have seen though is it's a little harder to ignite and so we have to run a higher engine temperature get it, to get it to vaporize some so oh, it does right. ignite. Yeah, you gotta run higher engine temperature so it vaporizes. Yeah. yeah. How about if the ignition's got like four spark plugs completely knocked out of it? <laughs> Well, that, that slows things down just a bit. But see, then I, again, the MSD kept firing past. Yeah. Um, and the pros for it, obviously, dirt cheap yes. makes power. <laughs> so basically, I'd say if you're a guy on pump gas, don't worry about any of this. You might want to run E85. It'll give you a little bit more power on your naturally aspirated deal. If you've got compression, man, this oxygenated fuel is an eye opener. That's gonna give you another 10th or something, put you just over the edge of where you need to be. If you're running boost, just go to the alcohol. That's it, right? Done. Done. <laughs> All right, firm answers, which rarely happens on any episode of Engine, Engine Masters. Masters.